Commission meeting for <coughs> May 23rd. I welcome you and invite you to join us to salute the flag. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In case of fire, there are two ways to exit these chambers. To my left, your right, through the double doors, turn left, down the stairway at the base of the stair, turn left again, and go directly out of the building. The quickest and safest, the fastest way, perhaps, would be to the rear of the chambers, through the double doors, down the stairs. But in either case, again, Walk a safe distance away from the building. Uh, Secretary, please take the roll. Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Nicola Fakus. Absent Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. D John Petronella. Here. Richard Suzak is here, and Guillermo Salazar is absent. Linda DeGray will be sitting in for the absent commissioner. Uh, there are no minutes uh, because of, there aren't any minutes, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have them for you at the next meeting. I guess there was some discrepancy between. Um, well, staff was all at a conference. Staff, so. Yeah, yeah we were away. Was it was, yeah. So we'll have them for you. So we will have them uh, at the next meeting for you. Uh, so right now we're into public participation. And uh, we ask that we welcome your uh, comments, concerns, and opinions relating to planning and zoning in Enfield. From anyone who's present, provided you may not discuss any matter of business that, that is on the agenda for this evening, any matter that's part of an open public hearing of the commission, or any matter where a decision of the commission may be pending. Is there anyone who would like to address the commission? Yes. So come forward, oh, Steve. Steve Cogtell at 2 South River Street. And uh, I know the, uh, the, the commission is getting a lot of uh, bad rep regarding the two projects on South River Street. I just want to say we know that you're not responsible as a result of the zone change request that we're, the zone changes that were implemented has anything to do with that. I just want to put that on the record. And the people I talk to, I'm clarifying that with them. But I do feel that over the last 10 years, we have been lied to by various committees and commissions regarding the uh, transit concept, the intermodal transportation uh, concept or uh, vision that, that's been going on. And uh, all the meetings that I've attended in the past, uh, we were assured that uh, even with the conceptual drawings, how elaborate they were, that they would, they would never acquire or seek acquiring privately owned properties. And yet we're before us, that's what we have. And so I'd like to discuss those, uh, those two projects on South River Street, and that is the, uh, the river access which is an option, and the, uh, the South River Street Bridge replacement, which is a necessity. And a couple of misconceptions I'd like to clear up regarding them is that I'm hearing from public officials that, um, well, we're getting the direction from the, the state. We have to do certain things because the state is requiring us to do that. Well, that's a fallacy. That's untrue. And that's supported by meeting minutes of the May, the, uh, May 6th council meeting by Mark Burns, who was a DOT uh, representative. Also, uh, what's being stated is that, well, in order to do the bridge, we have to take acquisition of the properties. That's also false as well, and I'll get into that a little bit. But that's also corroborated by the meeting minutes of the council meetings of March of uh, May 6th. And with regard to the, um, the bridge, uh, Mark Burns made it very clear that if the town wants to scale that back, they can do so. Of course, it would eliminate the um, the six foot wide walkway and a six foot wide walkway is about the length of the town hall here and uh it just, it's it's really it's unnecessary and the reason is is because what, what mark burns was was stating is that the bridge can be reduced from 24 feet in in width i believe it was two 10 foot lanes with two two foot shoulders to a 20 foot uh wide bridge 
with two 10-foot lanes. And to give you some perspective, you have currently two 11-foot lanes there right now in existence. However, the, the, the 22 feet has never been utilized for half a century, 49 years to be specific. Uh, the, the north end is 17 feet and the south end is 18 feet. It's been bottlenecked like that for years. And uh, there's no reason for it. I don't know why the town ever uh, completed the bridge project. They did do an acquisition of land, the same land that they want now, back in 1970 to complete that north side. Never did it. And that road, being the width as it is, and the narrowness of the bridge has supported vehicle, bicycle, pedestrian, wheelchair traffic without any problems at all. No complaints, no incidents in a half a century. So when I hear that you need a six foot wide sidewalk uh, for safety reasons, I think history speaks for itself and invalidates that, that statement. With regard to the bridge, uh, it's stated that if we do, if the bridge is reduced, while there's some issues about uh, railroad being on, the road being on railroad property, encroaching on railroad property was the exact statement. And it just surprises me after 140 years that South River Street has been established and we've passed and repassed on that road, all of a sudden now it's on railroad property. Um, if you look at the railroad map that was provided to me uh, from 1915, and they also provided a deed from 1892, the two don't coincide and no one's explained that to me yet. However, let's just say the worst case scenario that it is on railroad property. Well, section eight of the railroad valuation map, and I'll tell you how you can pull those up so you can see this for yourself. Section eight, where this South River Street encroaches, well, so does Main Street. Section seven on the railroad map, an entire section of, of Main Street encroaches on it. If you look at uh, section four of that railroad map, where the Asdunthic Street bridges, that encroaches on it. You can't even get into 33 North River Street into the front door without going on railroad property. And I can go on with North River Street. Half of the road to the length of the road is on railroad property. I physically did some measuring to confirm that. So for, for someone to make that statement, I think it's really ludicrous because there's obviously some easement that, that the town has with the, with the railroad. When asked about an, an easement, uh, with a state representative, um, didn't answer the question. When asked with the town, per, with town personnel, town personnel said, well, you have to talk to the state. Uh, another, another issue is that we, we talked to uh, uh, um, the town. The town says, well, we've had communication. Well, some people in the town said we've had communication with the, uh, with the Amtrak. Talked to another person in the town, and that's reflected in the meeting minutes of uh, uh, May 6th, well, there was no communication with the town. I mean, what are we supposed to believe? And this is a problem. And so, if in, if in fact, uh, there, there are people think that there's a safety issue with regard to the, uh, the road not being wide enough to accommodate the various types of traffic going down there, uh, you have to remember, 120 feet away, just on the east side of the bridge, of, of the railroad underpass, they're building an $850,000 pedestrian walkway, bicycle and pedestrian, 850,000 steel truss bridge, 120 feet away from that. So it doesn't make, too, uh, you know, it doesn't make sense to have that type of redundancy, particularly when you're talking about acquisition of a full property, knocking a house down, and that acquisition, another partial acquisition where you're taking 20 feet off of a off side of a house, off of the side yard of a house. That just doesn't make any sense to me. You know, I, I, and I really think the, the main reason for this is that this vision of the uh, transit-oriented development, I think we need to take a look at that a little bit because, you know, before when you had the conceptual drawings, you had this gigantic train station. Then it got reduced by a state design, both on the west side of the tracks. Now it's reduced to a platform on the east side of the tracks, and that's not even approved. You have the building on 33 North River Street, what was supposed to be rehabbed in 2016. It was supposed to be uh, mixed-use apartments and, uh, and storefronts, and it had a restaurant on the top. Uh, what's going on with that? 20, in 2008, there was a $4,000 price tag to rehab it. I can imagine what the price tag is now. Then you got the Eversource property. Uh, that's been in, a, in negotiations for 10 years. Now it's supposed to be acquired, I believe, in, uh, toward the end of September, uh, toward the end of uh, the summer or, or early fall. Even if it's acquired, how long is it going to take to clean up? Five years, 10 years down the road? So I, I would really like to see 
something happened with those properties. Not to mention 28 South River Street, the Strand, 32 uh, Church Street. I'm just talking about the area of the transit-oriented development. Let's see something happen there. This is, to me, this is a perfect example of putting the cart before the horse. Okay, it's actually an excellent example of what not to do as far as planning goes. An excellent example of, um, of planning at its worst. You know, and when I think about this, I think about uh, the, uh, the realignment of uh, North Main Street, where they knocked all the buildings down back in, I think, the early 70s. And th then now it's called revitalization. Uh, you ask somebody now, oh, it was a mistake. This is a mistake. I'm not saying that maybe sometime in the future that this, could, that this should happen. But until something materializes, you don't start taking people's privately owned properties for a vision that may not occur. And I ask that if anything comes before this council in the future, get all the facts, because the council approved this as it was designed. And at that public meeting on 417, no one spoke in favor of this at all. And no one was ever made, uh, uh, except for myself, I wasn't made aware a little bit earlier, but as far as providing any input, none. No one was provided uh, the, the ability to provide input to the design on this, unlike w what you guys did with the, uh, with the planning and uh, with, the, with the zoning, the zoning changes. And so I would just ask again, if uh, this comes before you folks, to look at the whole picture before you make any decisions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else would like to address the commission? Anyone else would like to address the commission? Last call to address the commission. Okay, here, moving on. Uh, bond releases. We have uh, two, I believe, two requests, and you have quite a lot of information on it. So this is um, regarding the uh River Overlook and River Meadows subdivisions. Um, they basically want to finish the roads over there, um, and it was recommended by engineering, given the amount of time that has passed since the base of the roads were put down, that if the town were to adopt the roads, the base of the road should be replaced, given the um, condition that it's in. So in order to do that, given the cost, um, they would like to have their cash bonds released um, and to ensure that we have something in place in case the work doesn't get done after we release the bond. We're asking for a surety to be filed prior to the release of the bond. Um, and really, this is just before you to see if that's something that you would be um, amenable to. So uh, you received a memo from Lori. Um, and on the back, she put a motion uh, or a draft motion for you guys to consider if you would like to. Um, I hate to admit it, but I was on the commission at the time this went through, and there, as it has here, there were two uh, really developments. The, the first was, uh, as it says, states uh, only a few lots were able to be developed because there was only one entrance. And it really ended up as a, I believe, a circle, as I remember. Mm -hmm. And then uh, later, they purchased a house on uh, Broad, uh, yeah, Broadway. Bridge Lane. Bridge Lane. And were able to make another exit, which opened up the land and back, and then they could further <laughs> develop. But I thought the second development was going to be developed by individual contractors or was being developed by individual contractors. So when it comes to the bonding, my question was who the who who's gonna put up the bonds and where where does the money go back when it's given? But there's also a third yeah. development. A third development off of the side street there that goes towards Enfield High, they put a cul-de-sac in right. that doesn't tie into the two streets, but that is part of that subdivision. Oh, all right, I, that, there's another one. <laughs> you know, and I kind of agree with what you, you're saying, Charlie. Why would you release the bond and it, the road's not done, and if the road's in poor condition, you know, that subdivision's been going 15, 18 years if not longer, I'd be concerned about releasing them. Well, the 
I know that the, she quotes the state law, and I recall I came through because we had a discussion on that, that they were given extensions. Was it uh, a state regulation? Yeah. Right. Uh, yes. and so, so they were given it. Uh, they got used apparently used that extension, uh, but again, I don't, I'm not aware of bonds. And it goes on that the, the town rec recommended a surety bond is adequate to satisfy Enfield Department of Public Works, but I don't know what a surety bond is or what it does. So I've, re I've reviewed the file um, for all of this pretty extensively. It's a lot of information. Um, there are two separate uh, subdivisions. There's a three-lot subdivision that's separate from, I think, what, Charlie, you were referencing, which is the 15-lot subdivision, which does create a circle and has two different cul-de-sacs. But there is the three-lot oh, subdivision. I'm sorry. There was, right, there was one up above by the owner's house that didn't mm -hmm. go down the hill. Right. That's mm -hmm. way up on the top. Right. That's not even on, because uh, that's not even that's quoted not here. That's so, not, yeah, it's at PH twenty four seventy nine. Well, that's a three lot subdivision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's not off of a uh, uh, bridge. Bridge. Right. It's off the other street. That's off the other street. Uh, I can't recall the name of that street. Riverview Street. Yeah. It's Riverview Street. Oh, all right. So there's right. That Riverview Street, and then there's two more. Right. I'm right. sorry. So I stand corrected. Both of them, they were approved. They had obviously the standard five years to get the work done. Um, they bonded for the roads only. And then um, that state statute kicked in that allowed them to do the work for nine years. Um, they ran out of time on that too. So they asked for an extension for another five years and that was in 2015. And that was approved. So they do have until 2020 to complete the work on um, the roads. Do the, the three divisions, subdivisions now, are they all one person, they one were, developer? No. So some of the houses were developed, some were not. They did sell all of the lots in the, um, all of the incomplete lots. Obviously, the lots that were completed are now owned by homeowners, but the lots that were not completed have been sold. Um, so Pappas is re the Pappas is really just they have the roads and they want to get the roads adopted by the town and it was recommended by the um, engineering office that they um, replace the base coat and that's what the, where the extra expense is coming for that they didn't they didn't really account for when they filed the bonds having to replace the base coat and then put the top coat on. Who, who does the original bond? The, if all three are separated. Who does the original bond go back to? Pappas. Pappas. The Pappases. The people who Pappas, filed the all bond. All three of them. The, but who was legally responsible for finishing the roads? Pappas. The Pappases. Yeah. And she just sold it, and now she's trying to get her bond released. And our our staff is saying that the base coat, which is 20 years right, old, right. is failing. Right. So, so we release her bonds. She sold the property already. Well, that's what I am asking. No, they I, I still don't know own, who else. So they still own the roads. So the town does not have to accept the roads <coughs> until they're in such a condition and they meet the standards of the I, requirements. I understand of what you're saying. And sitting on the town council, we've dealt with this. They own the roads. They stop paying tax on them. They walk away from them like several developers do in this town. Like the town forecloses right. well, and ends up with the roads anyways. Yeah. Right. So and that's their easy way out because she probably owns them under an LLC or a corp, not her personal self. Mm -hmm. And that's how they wash their hands of this and stick it to the taxpayers of Enfield. She started the subdivision 20 years ago. It's not this commission or the town's fault that she waited 20 years to put the top coat down. I understand why you do that, mm -hmm. but... But, now, if she sold individual lots... Yeah, uh, the, the question that I have is, is that if, if all the lots are already sold, then realistically there's really no reason why that road cannot be finished because of the fact that, you know, that there's no impetus for them not to finish the road right now. So realistically, they should finish the road and then we re release their bond. Well, and until they, they fin want to finish it. Yeah. Well, they, they do want to finish they it. And that's, the, that's sort of what... But, but that shouldn't be coming from us. I agree. Well, you know, well, that, that's why that should not be, are getting to. And you, right, that you should not be our... individual lots you said are sold. Right, well, what... And who's going to, I mean, if they, they get stuck with a thing and they have no finished code. This plan, so this, what, what we're proposing here is not to release the bonds right now. 
This is just to approve the sequence at which they get the work done. So what we would want to do is before any bonds are released, they, they filed cash bonds. So they gave us actual checks right. for like 150 something thousand dollars. They want to get that released. We're saying that we wouldn't have, we wouldn't put that before you for a, re a release until we have a surety bond, which is through, um, usually through like Western surety. It basically, you have the money, the town can access the money to complete the roads if it needs to, and the person who files the bond has to pay um, a certain amount to the company to keep those bonds um, well, that's what Current. I said. I didn't know. But, but the surety so. bond is under the corporation's name. So when the corporation goes defunct, nobody's paying the surety bond anymore. There's no money for the town to collect. The town, the town council has a list of properties throughout town yeah, we've that builders right. have just walked away from, you know, because we didn't want to accept it as open space. They don't want to keep paying tax on it. So what do they do? They change the name of the business and they keep doing it again and again. Correct, Jenny? They're all over town. And That's we right, have right. the cash. Securing these roads are going to be done right now. They need to be done with cash. Not a sh uh, They didn't start with a surety. They shouldn't finish with it. I agree with you, folks. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. um, in, in a normal course of action, the town accepts surety bonds for, for, for the roadways, correct? And, and in this case, they put up a cash bond? <laughs> I, I believe state statute allows you to collect bonds if you've after you've already sold the lots, so they can collect sh cash bond or. But in a normal bonds. course of of, of a, a subdivision approval, the town would accept a surety bond or cash. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So they're looking to substitute that. So um, I know what surety bonds are all about, and and, and and they're there to protect the town. The town would be indemnified should that party go defunct, then the town has recourse to go after the surety bond. Um, I, I deal with that situation quite often. And um, so I, I don't have an issue with surety bonds, uh, as long as it's uh, acceptable to the financial department, uh, uh, the finance director of the town, and it's uh, uh, a certain AAA company uh, um, that, that issues them. Um, my big concern is that the bond was issued for $152,000 <clears> how long ago? Yeah, so I, I feel like the engineer should do another estimate because it could be $300,000 today. <coughs> and that if they're going to do that, that that surety bond should cover today's cost of the improvements and not just $152,000. And then there should be a form of a developer's agreement that, uh, and, and, and this should be timed out too, that they've got uh, a year or two to complete the work. But, you know, That's with stipulations such as yeah. that, I, I, you know, I, I would feel comfortable with, with a surety bond as long as it's Yeah, a, and know. that that's another thing is when the app, when the subdivisions were approved, uh, one of the conditions of approval was that a developer's agreement, agreement did need to be filed. Um, it has not been filed, uh, or at least if it was, uh, it's not in our files. So um, that's one of the things that is part of the um, part of the process that Lori listed on here um, as needing to be done. Um, and that's what the town attorney has recommended is to accept a developer's agreement prior to all of this. So, so the individual lot owners that bought the individual lots are stuck because you say you wouldn't issue any building permits to any of these lots. So, so those people would be stuck if this isn't finished. Well, let me ask you, when did the town start accepting surety bonds? Because when we built Bellawood, it was either cash or a letter of credit from the bank. No, well, it was a, a letter of credit, but it also was insurance, not surety bonds, insurance company bonds. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference, even though they're, they're done by, along with insurance, surety bonds are totally I, aside from insurance I, I bonds. I just, we have the money. The roads are failing. Why would you give the money back before the roads are done, considering she sold the property? I don't understand it. There's really no reason why she would 
again, she could possibly just walk away, stop paying for the surety bonds, and then once the surety bonds are no longer supported, then the surety company says, well, I, I don't necessarily have to pay you anything because the person who was paying, you know, the, the, the fee to ensure that the surety bonds were active has no longer paid me, so I don't have to pay you to do something that I haven't been paid to do. So in, in that sense, I agree with Mr. Nelson in terms of, you know, if, if, it ha it, if it took already 20 years, how many more years is it going to take to complete this project? And, you know, could somebody walk away by just changing a corporation name to say that I no longer own it and, you know, the town is stuck with it? And I, I would have to agree that if, if this has happened previously, that, you know, you fool me once, you know, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. So, you know, I don't think that we should necessarily, you know, go down this road unless we have some some positive way of ensuring that a, a person, you know, cannot walk away and that it, it you know, it, it's, we can get the money if it's not done in a, in a timely fashion. Uh, the, the surety bond is prepaid 100 percent up front, number one. The, it, w it, would, it, it would support a developer's agreement. That's, that's what it's, that's what it's uh, uh, um, in ensuring that the surety is tied into the developer's agreement. If they're in default of the developer's agreement, then the town has an obligation to notify the surety and say that they're in default and they call in the bond. And it's pretty, pretty basic. That's, that's how it works. So it, it, it'll never get timed out because of lack of payment because it is paid 100 percent up front. They, they can't get the surety bond unless it's paid for. And, and it would be Can tied in, into a contract or, or an agreement. Again, it, it, again, is, is it an, an indefinite agreement that, you know, that the thing is insurance is, is only good as long as you pay your insurance. And as soon as you default paying on your insurance, the insurance company says your, your, your our agree, agreement or, or surety or whatever, you know, nothing ever lasts forever unless you give them the, the, the actual amount of money that you're going to be pay, paid out, because ultimately they, they're liable for that payment. And it, it doesn't make sense to me that, you know, somebody would, you know, again, be able to not default on something if they weren't paid in full for the amount of money that they could possibly be paying out. Because, you know, it, it just by the, the return system that, you know, it's a pyramid scheme where, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't have enough money, you're never going to be able to pay out enough. So, you know, in that sense, I think that, you know, depending on, you know, how confident we are that this is going to get finished, that we should tread lightly before we go forward. I, I, I would certainly defer to the finance department and, and the legal department, but uh, a, a surety is uh, a much better guarantee than a letter of credit from a bank. But if she hasn't for sure. had a contract, it's agreement. But is it better than cash? Is, no. is, is $152,000 going to finish the road in today's dollars? And you might have an opportunity to increase that to $300,000 if, if yeah. that's the mm -hmm. fact. Because if, if that's a 20-year-old number, it's, it's certainly a lot more money right now. So, Absolutely. I agree with that. It's, but I mean, I, there's a lot of road down I, there. I, I, again, I would have the road, engineer look at the roadway and do a revised estimate in today's dollars to see if that 152000 is adequate yeah. or if it needs to be bumped. To today's dollars he he probably will this this um i guess list of steps and and the process really has been um solidified by uh both our uh, lori the town attorney the town engineer um i'm not sure if the finance director was in there too um but well there was a period of time we had a lot of trouble collecting on bonds i know it's when banks were having problems and some of them were uh, disappearing, but uh, and they, we weren't. We got stuck with a lot of bonds. Uh, a lot of paper. <laughs> did a lot of paper, yeah. So, so I don't know the situation. That's why I asked. I'm not. If John is correct, I'm not that familiar with surety bonds. We've always done letter of credits or cash, but it says the applicant shall file uh, surety bonds in adequate amount to satisfy Enfield Department of Public Works. Yes. I think you're looking at more like a million dollars by the time you rip the base up, put a new base down, and then the top coat on those roads. So if, if that's the case there, but the first one is what gets me, the applicant must finalize a developer's agreement for both subdivisions. 
They haven't done it in 20 years. They haven't done it, yeah. That's why they said that. So, I mean, why are we going to show common courtesy for somebody who hasn't followed protocol for 20 years? Well, I don't know why the town didn't get the development. Uh, Charlie. Oh, yes. I don't know as much about surety bonds as, as John does, but I know a little bit about it. And uh, I, my question is, can she, can the company that built River, whatever it is, River, can they get a surety bond when they don't own it anymore? Well, that's why they own the road. They own the road. They own the road? Yeah. Okay. That's what they, they're trying to get the town to adopt. Okay. So. Right. But, well, the town. but the people who live on those roads, you, you think about it, it's going to end up being, if she walks away right now, if John's correct, which I think he's very correct on the dollar amount, yeah, yeah. and she says, oh, if that's a million dollars to finish those roads, keep the 150, see you later, the town is going to foreclose on the roads. They have to, because we've allowed people to buy property on those roads, yeah. and they have to access their homes. Shame on the town for only having $150,000 on hand. But I would really want an attorney's opinion on the surety bond. I know he knows what he's talking about, but I want to hear it from them. And then I would want our engineering department to put some real numbers on all that roadway down there that's got to get replaced and redone. And that's what that surety bond would have to cover before I even consider this. Okay, so I, I think that's I agree. what John says and, yeah. and what you say. Well, I'm going well, off of John. We, I mean, we get the figures from uh, engineering. We should table it. And uh, then also get uh, information you want from uh, the town of finance. Right. I want the, you know, rule of thumb what's top dog, next down, next down. Obviously, a letter of credit, I would say, is the lowest. Yeah, they uh, were I want a legal back. opinion. They meant, yes, yeah, when, yeah. when we had the problems. Uh, so you good you with that, the, John? Is it the finance director you'd, you'd, we'd want? And engineering. And engineering. Yeah, yeah. At least. <coughs> okay, so you want I'll make real, a motion. Numbers, yeah. real numbers from uh, engineering for all the roadways. Should update, yeah, update the current, uh, to today's current uh, numbers, prices. today's dollars, yeah. Well, look how much oil's gone up in the last 20 years. Yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> well, that's blacktop. And and but but you want not only just the what has to, you want the what is it grinding? Well, you want the sub base replaced or the base replaced the base if replaced. that's what the town's plus, requiring. Plus, so you want to rip up the base, right? So you want the total figure of the roadway, the base and. The, I, I would leave it to the town engineer to right. decide the, the okay, scope so of work, the and town, then he can estimate. You want it. the town engineer. To evaluate the current yeah. base Prices. condition, right. recommendation, whether it should be replaced, repaired, whatever, and a top coat. And the, pri the, the price. You know, you've you got all the curbing and everything else in there, too. And you also want the uh, finance director to go over the bonding and so forth or what? So A legal opinion on the surety bond, whether they're... I mean, the way he's saying it, it makes sense. And the way this know, is written. And it, when the town puts out contracts for bids, let's say it's a $5 million roadway reconstruction, they require a surety bond that, that the contractor has to post, has to put up as surety in case he defaults on the contractor and goes bankrupt and, and leaves the work unattended to. Then the town has got the surety bond company to go after to complete the work, and, and it, it happens quite often, and, and that's that's what they accept, and it's an industry standard in, 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 in all of construction throughout but don't the country. They lo don't they look at the assets of the company and everything to issue that surety bond? Correct. So when you're talking an individual yeah. homeowner, yeah. you've been in business years and years, and the, you know, yeah, this developer other, would have to put up assets. Uh, uh, there's a formula that they would use enough of assets and able to get a bond for X amount of dollars. Right. So they're yeah. they're actually putting up something. They're they're putting up personal assets. If for, they have it. If they have it. If they don't have it, they won't be able to get the bond. Right. So, so so they have to have backing. 
That's a, yeah. Right. Yeah, they, you just can't buy it like insurance. Right. So. So, good. Make a motion to table. Well, yeah, but I think you want a motion first uh, that we discuss the who you who you want in here so you can get the information. So I think we got the, I, I wrote down here um, that you're looking for memos from town attorney, um, the finance director, and the engineering department for um, what's the best uh, of form of. Do you want the, do you want those individuals here to discuss it or do you want. No, no? I don't. Just, okay. Just, I was just going to get memos if then, that's okay. Uh, that's a, yeah. Then just, do you want a motion then? To motion to table? No, the motion to have these people and then table. Because we have discussed it. Right, she wrote it all down already. That's all right, but you still would need a motion. Go ahead. I'll, I'll, make a, I'll make a motion that we request some additional information from the town attorney to the town engineer and a finance director to evaluate the, the best, best path of action for us to ensure that the town does not get does, does Ooh, that's still not get no, that's still you know. what you want because you, you want the, exactly. exact, the right. figures right and if you say that you're going to get what basically you already well, have well well we want an updated value for the replacement of the, the roads and the, the the base the base coat and and the the, the 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 exact definition of how a surety bond works and whether it, it would be beneficial for us to, to get that in, in lieu of the cash payment that we have right now Second. And you, you wanted town attorneys too. Well, I don't yeah, know. I already yeah. got okay. to her in there. Okay, the motion's made and second. Discussion on the motion? Okay, then all in favor? All right, good. And now. I'll make a motion to table this um, request for bond release, PH 2479 and 2526 until we get the information that we requested. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, I was thinking uh, the uh, one in the South End, I remember we had trouble with the one Ledger Star developed. Up. That was a big one. Okay. Site plan, SPR 174-25 Hazard Avenue. They have uh, requested once again to be tabled. Uh, they still have um, until your next meeting. We have that in writing again. I, uh, I, I have the in my email. He sent back the form that we usually send out. Um, I didn't get a chance to print it late in the day, but. It is um, signed? Yep. All right. Do we still have enough time? We do. Yeah, we're on for a while. Yes. We do. We do have until your next meeting, and then they either have to withdraw. I would ask. I asked her to ask them extension. if they would rather withdraw now because they've had so many extensions and they haven't been able to produce for one reason or another. I wish they had withdrawn before, and then we'll deny it without prejudice, or you know. And, but they apparently want to keep it on there. But I don't know if you're going to have all brand new application or what's going to go on. All right, I would prefer that they had withdrawn, but that's their choice. They, that's their choice. Yeah. Because it's a they're pushing it because they, what's the date? They got two days about after the next meeting, something like that. Right. Yeah. Right, but they're still approved. Their original plan is approved. Yeah. It's just the changes they decided to make. Yeah, well, because of the engi our engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, the motion is in order. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we table SPR 1774 to our next meeting of June 13th. Second. Motion is made, second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Public hearing. 2940, 90 Enfield Streets, the Dunkin' Donuts, and the Secretary take the roll and read the legal notice. Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. John Petronella. Here. And Rich Suzak is here.
Uh, Linda de Grey will be sitting in for the absent commissioner. Is the applicant here? Okay. To read the public notice. The Infill Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 23rd at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Infill Street, Infill, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing 2940-90 Infill Street, special use permit application for a Dunkin' Donuts with a drive through to be located on an existing building, 90 Enfield Incorporated owner, Carlos Santano, applicant, map 35, lot 41 and 42, BG zone, King Street, Enfield Street, design overlay district. Gentlemen, you know the routine. Please uh, identify yourselves with your name and address. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I am Dana Steele, a professional engineer with J.R. Russo and & Associates, and I'm here tonight representing Carlos Caetano, who's the applicant uh, for this property at 90 uh, Enfield Street. Uh, Carlos uh, owns uh, a number of uh, Duncan franchises in town and is looking to uh, uh, occupy a vacant space on the ground floor of the existing building at 90 Enfield Street. And so, I'd like to uh, move over to the um, to the plan and, and, and run through it with you. But first, uh, I, I do have uh, this uh, as a public hearing, and the hearing sign was uh, was posted at the site, and I have the affidavit to submit. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so this this site is located uh, at the intersection of uh, Bright Meadow Boulevard. So there's a traffic light there on Route 5, and uh, and the light services the access to this to this site. It's a little unusual. The uh, the, the parcel is only a half an acre. It's this pink area here, which encompasses the building in the front parking area. Uh, but the surrounding property is owned by Eversource. There's these overhead power lines that run uh, to the to the left of the site, and Eversource owns owns this property. But the owner of 90, en of, of 90 uh, Enfield, Inc. Uh, has a lease agreement with Eversource, which is this yellow area. So the, the pink area and the yellow area combined is the total development area of this site. So it involves two different properties, uh, but, and this is, this is an, existing, an existing site, an existing parking lot, an existing building. What we're proposing from a site standpoint is very is very minimal. Um, the, uh, the, there's a concrete island on the uh, south uh, west side of, of the building. As you're looking at the building from the street on the left hand side, that's going to be removed to make room for a drive through lane. And then we have existing landscape islands in the back that, that are in yellow and we're going to be shifting them to the, to the green areas so that we can a, accommodate a, a new parking layout that makes room for a, dr a drive-through lane along the back side of the building. So this is what the site uh, looks like uh, in the proposed condition with the elimination of the 90-degree parking on, on the left side and turning those into parallel spaces leaving some area for, for lo a loading zone, which doesn't currently exist. And a, a new dumpster pad in the back, in the pink here. Uh, and and this, this drive-through lane. So traffic would, would come in, go around the islands, and to get in line for the drive-through. And the, and the order menu would be at this, this concrete pad here, which is shown in pink. And then the pickup would be at the window in this, at this concrete pad, also shown in pink. Uh, to uh, update the building and to identify this, this new use, because the building is very uniform looking now, all spl split face block, two story, um, with, with signs over, over e each of the, uh, the uses. To, to make it stand out a little more, they're proposing awnings over the windows. And so they would be uh, orange awnings, uh, a Duncan uh, color that you're, uh, you're probably familiar with. Uh, uh, we, it we says gave red in the Thing. It looks red to you? It says red. It says red. Oh, I think in the staff report. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think Lori looked at it as red, but I think okay. it's. Okay, I guess yeah. it's a, well, it's a, it was <laughs> a matter of opinion. Dunkin' Donuts is, is orange. Yeah. 
Uh, we consider it an orange color. I think maybe that's just a, it's, it, is a it is a darker orange, so it, it's, it becomes a, oh, uh, it maybe subjective what, what, what color you consider it. But we did provide some uh, photos uh, of uh, what, what those awnings look like. Yeah, um, but they hung on the building, and, and if you, you're with this, and it's a two-story building, and these do look red. They don't look, absolutely. They, they don't look orange. Where the That's Dunkin' Donuts are orange, anyhow. Those are definitely red. Can I address a yes. pretty major issue that I see? I'm going to stand up so people can see. Use the microphone, Kenny. <laughs> so you're going to come in this way. You're going to come down here. Your exit for your drive through has to cross this lane of traffic, correct? You're going to continue around, continue around. Well, if you stay in the proper lane, you're butt head on with this. So you're going to have to have cars doing crossing each other here. Nobody in the United States drives that way. You're creating such an, a traffic accident. Yeah, you're right. This is uh, this is a typo. That's going the wrong direction. Is that, is that, is that what you're looking at? This is yeah. Cancer, which is like uh, uh, London. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, I just, I, I didn't, I didn't notice that. Um, and so see, see how this one is <coughs> correct. It should have been over there unless it got, got rotated. I didn't notice that. And you do have the drive through exiting across the traffic that's pulling in. It's an intersection. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know they have an intersection like this in Hazardville at the, at the Dunkin' Donuts. It's in a strip mall and it's a major problem right there. And last, the address on this building is also wrong. That's 88 Enfield Street. Uh -huh. 78. Okay. Well, we can uh, correct the address, um, and I can correct the arrow that is going the wrong direction on the back of the back of the site. As for the concern about about this, uh, the congestion here, I would acknowledge it's not it's not ideal, um, but uh, it is. Um, uh, uh, has has the proper uh, aisle widths. Um, it's a it's it's not a the traffic's not moving fast in this way because it's a lot of a lot of turns. You got to turn and then to turn again. So you can't you can't build up much speed. Seven o'clock in the morning, somebody's late to work. They want their coffee, and you have somebody parked in that handicap spot there. Right here. Somebody's pulling out of that mic, drive through. Please. Somebody's whipping around the corner turn of that building. Mic. That's a problem. Well, they they have. Uh, it's it's visible. You can you can see. It's not it's not How is obstructed. it visible if what there's a there, van there? What about? I do have to say something. Is last night at around five o'clock, I did go and look at the site. I was on a motorcycle, so we're not talking car width. And there was two cars that were queued up to turn left at the light. Okay. Out and there. I barely was able to get around them. So we're not talking a car width, we're talking motorcycle width. And it it was a little hairy and I and I have to agree with you with them queuing up for the light if they have to take a left or to go straight across to go down to um, Phoenix. To Phoenix because you're gonna have cars that are gonna wanna come in, get their coffee, and then if they're going across the street to go to work, take a left to go into mass, whatever you're going to have a big traffic issue because people are going to come in they're going to start queuing up onto enfield street and yeah how, how, how will because they the traffic the because you'll have cars that will be blocking their ability to turn left once they get into the driveway coming off, the highway. Coming off. this is a 24 foot aisle it's wide enough right. for two-way traffic it's wide enough, but I got my coffee. I got to go to work. What am I going to do? I'm going to pull up. And then you've got cars stacking t at the light. They're either going to be able to take Leave that right property, or they're, they're going to be within that property. But then you've got cars that are coming off of Route 5 to go in there to get their coffee. You're going to have them stacking up onto Route 5. And I need to get to 91. I'm not going to be happy sitting there waiting for cars to make their right-hand turn to get to 91. It's I I, I think it's you know 
And then when I was leaving the property, again, I stopped at the light because I was making a left-hand turn. There was a car that was parked in one of those spots right behind me. <clears throat> She had a really hard time backing up and turning around to, to, to get behind me to make her left hand turn. So it was an experience that I had and there's not even a lot of traffic in there yet. So I, the parking in front might be an issue. I know you can't take that away because there's other um, businesses in there. But I can see some. Unless you move the handicapped over. I, there's, I just, I, I was only there for like 15, 20 minutes and saw some issues. And you don't even have this place up and running yet. Well, I mean, you do have you do have a light at the at the driveway, right. so right. I mean most sites don't have that benefit. I, the light is 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 great. I like the idea, so, but. If I'm heading south and I can go turn that turn right in there and there's cars that have blocked my ability to go in and take a left to go around to the back of the building and there's few other cars behind me that want to also go in there you're going to start queuing up lanes on, out, two lanes out really, right you're going to have so. cars stacking up on route 5 because they can't, they're, they're in the lot, they're partially into the lot because no, the lights there hasn't changed yet. Cars can't take a left or go straight across. So do you think cars coming in here are not gonna be able to turn left? Exactly, especially if you're early morning, well, trying to go to work. The cars that are leaving are on this side, so there's a lane But they're on this also side. going to block that ability Come on, we all ride down roads and lights turn or whatever, and people are trying to get through a light and it's stopped or whatever. They're halfway through an intersection. Here, I've got to get up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to stay right. She's making the right turn. He's right at the. All right, so same thing you, you said. I you came in here. Bus in there was already spot. You a car here at the light, coming out sorry, of the right here, and then right. there was zero. another car right there. I had to swing all the way over here to go through, and I came around, which was fine. Then I came out. I was here at the light. The lady was parked here. She, because of the, the distance, she really had to back up like that and turn to make her left hand turn behind me. That's the issue. So if you've got cars coming out, because hey, everybody has to have their coffee in the morning. I'm one of those people, all right? <laughs> I'm going to have cars stacking here. They're gonna come out. So this is starting to build up because they're gonna either take a left or they're gonna go across. Now you've got this line of cars. The ones that can turn right are great, but it's the ones that are gonna turn left or go straight across. They're gonna start to stack up here. And okay, this guy's waiting. He pulls forward, the next one pulls forward. The light still hasn't changed. Right, so, so we, now so we we're to make blocking. Sure these cars leaving don't pull out and block this. this right, yeah. and then so now that you've got yes, these cars a sign that says do not block aisle. something something i think a stop sign first and then say do not block intersection stop sign second. and because i think that stop sign. sign is key to getting people to stop because mm -hmm. i've seen that at other businesses where they put a stop sign right there at the end of the drive through because i really think that requires people to stop and really look at what's going on around them traffic wise you know, so I think that yeah. that's an important piece. Yeah. And then don't do not block the intersection and go yeah. from there. You're going to need something. It's just that was yeah. like I said, I was there maybe yeah, if, 15 if, if minutes. If that happens, it, it, it could be a it could be an issue. I agree. Yeah. So, so we need to um, make sure that 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 those using it understand 
uh, that they can't wait in areas that are going to block that, that access. Right. Can we guarantee 100 percent that won't happen? No. Yeah. But you if can't we guarantee put this, people will obey signs. Right. <laughs> but you know what? If the signs are there, <laughs> do everything we can. Right. To, to make At least it. if you have something there, yeah, right. then people will be a little bit more aware. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. I thought Mary, you. I um, had a concern with a little different. If you look at the um, parking spaces 17, 18, 19, and 20, people are going to be pulling in and parking there. Well, if they want to go in the building, they're going to be crossing two-way traffic, and I don't even see, I don't even see where there's a walkway painted for them. Mm -hmm. um, well, there's there's this hatch area separating the uh, uh, the drive aisle and the and, and, and the aisle, but. Uh, Anyone parking here is walking across an aisle too. There's no hatchway. I mean, you, I, I, I'd be happy to put in a hatchway here, but it's, it's really only servicing, uh, servicing space 17. Well, the only reason I thought of that is if you go over to the, um, I know this is Dunkin' Donuts, but if you, if you go over to the McDonald's in the Coles Plaza, you used to be take your life in your hands trying to get from your car to the door to go inside because the <coughs> traffic was just going everywhere and it oh, was yeah, a big does. mess. That's why I thought I'd bring this up now. And um, also, my other question is, um, is it, it's an Eversource leak, lease, I'm sorry, not leak, lease, and um, is this something that can be renewed? Oh yeah, absolutely. It, it is okay. continually renewed, yeah. Okay. It's, uh, I, don't okay. I don't know what the term is. Do you remember, Carlos, with the the term, the lease term? How, how, how many years I think it, is? it goes on a five-year lease. Five year, and, and every five years it's renewed. Okay, thank you. What happens if Eversource doesn't renew it? They always do. No. <laughs> <laughs> how about Mary Yusa? Yep. I don't John? have any reason not to. I just have one more. <laughs> one more. Okay, and I don't know. But you also have another exit in the back to go between the uh, existing, that, that roadway yep. that goes between the garage and the motorcycle shop. Yep. Do you have an agreement with them that, that people can use that as a throughway? Because the motorcycle shop has like a little uh, deck type thing on their property for their entrance and right next to that is a handicap space so I'm just thinking people you know shooting in and going around and come whipping and you see there's a this this striped area here yeah. on uh, sheet two that's a that's an uh, an access right-of-way that's in favor of Eversource it's not in favor of, of uh, the owner of the or the owner of 90 ancestors. Okay, so it they do have that no. access then? No. no, they don't. So is it not, blocked not off? Not officially, is but there's nothing blocking people from. Well, using. that's what she's after. Well, that's my question because there was cars behind the um, garage, yeah. right? So and car, motorcycles parked along outside the um, motorcycle shop which makes all sense and then that handicapped space that was kind of in that right of way so it's yep. right here. yeah that it, it's an existing condition I mean we're not we're, we don't have any control over it so we we couldn't even propose to make changes to it if we if, if we wanted to I, I just see that the, you know you have like an exit in the back to use in other that. words, somebody, somebody's going to find out it exists, and instead of using your pattern to get out of using there, using the light. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're probably going to want to go out at the light because it'll be easier. But if it's not not a busy time, maybe maybe they'll want it. Um, they're not, scooted not have to in wait for a light. Well, that's right. Well, we're yeah. getting in. I, I think we're getting in. Yeah. I think what you're getting at, Donna or Linda, is they have an arrow showing traffic going that way, right. which they don't have a right to do. So right. that arrow shouldn't be there either. Um, that arrow's going the wrong way. This arrow's pointing to property you don't even own to send the traffic. Yeah. Sick. I'll take that out. 
got it. So Rick and with the van here, you have zero sight line for these cars coming around the corner and this car coming out. This is my car. Yeah. With a van here? If you had an ADA van parked Rich. in oh, the van. spot, yeah. somebody coming out here mm -hmm. and somebody coming around the corner, these people have no choice but right. to nudge out or pull out because there is zero sight line right there. Yeah, they'll have to pull out far enough so they can see. Well, the problem is, how far can you pull out before you clip the car coming around the corner? To, just to the to the end of the island, you'll be. I mean, you won't be able to see a car here, but you'll be able to see a car here. With a van parked here. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to see to, to to about where that that arrow is in in the middle. So your island comes around, just like this, yeah. and that's what these people are going to do. They're going to follow this right around. So here's your car trying, and you're still. You're sitting back here. Right. You're still not seeing around this corner well, of the van. Uh, yeah, you, you're seeing, you can see that arrow. See, see the sight line you have to the arrow? You, you're right, you won't be able to see the, the entire area, but these cars are moving, are turning. They can't be moving very fast. Go sit at Hazardville Dunkin' Donuts. He does a phenomenal business. I'm not taking it from him. Mm -hmm. They're queued all behind the plaza and it creates a traffic jam on Taylor Road sometimes. You sit where they come out of the drive through just like this, and the whole mall is trying to get out of this one intersection, and you watch those people pull out of that drive through without a, they're blowing on their hot coffee, eating their Boston cream donut, <laughs> not a care in the world. <laughs> yeah, that one is different. Yes, go ahead. Um, and I'm not sure if anybody looked at the, the police comments, but one of them was, putting that stop sign in um, that I was talking about at the end of the drive through So we do, I think that okay. that is something important. I, I thought it was back here they wanted it. They also, they said the main traffic aisle that leads from Route 5 and Twist and Turns, which addresses some of the issues other people had, um, should be at least 24 feet at all times. Is that something you can, is going to be possible? Yeah, that it will be 24, 24 feet? feet yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure um, that that because you know obviously that is the direction you want to make that a condition of approval maybe that I mean, it's showing that on the plan so it's really already a condition but if you have it as written out as a condition that way they can't double park in those aisles i think that's what probably what they're getting at but what if a truck uh double parks there yeah now now, now you don't have 24 feet because yes somebody well they're trying the clean flow of traffic in and out because we don't want anything to inhibit that ability for people to come in and out of there which is part of why the concern is it queuing up in different areas which i totally understand you know the point of that and unfortunately the way this parking lot is it's set up it twists and turns all over the place and that and that can be a problem definitely so um so yeah, that would definitely be something plus the stop sign. So for me. Well, you bring up a good point too, is deliveries. Where's the delivery truck park when he unloads? So has got a, a loading area here. So he's, so he's going to pull in and, and back up into this space. Well, how does it Where does a liquor company get their uh, deliveries? deliveries? I don't know. If it's the back the door. The liquor company? The liquor company. Angie's? Yeah. I Where do they? I don't. They they they, they probably uh, um, access from, from from the back here. Well, no, how are they going to do that with the cars in the your, uh, your lane. Yeah. Well, they can they can park here and walk it down, or if they're if they're parking here, yeah, they'll be they'll be blocking these 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 parking spaces. Yeah. Generally, those well, deliveries they try thing. not to come during peak times when it, there's a lot of activity going on. So. I don't think there's a lot. These these this back parking lot is uh, isn't isn't particularly. Full. But won't they be parking uh, the the delivery truck be parked up against the building by the door, which will be by your uh, drive-through lane. Well, they can they can park here uh, at the uh, in the if in the um, the, the loading area. Um, in the existing conditions, if they were, if they're parking here, the spaces are down further. They'd be blocking the parking spaces the same way. So I'm not. I'm talking about your drive-through lane. Won't they right. be parking the, in the drive-through lane? The Budweiser truck's going to pull to the back of the building, take his hand truck out like they do at the grocery stores and little stores. They pull right up front and they go in. Yeah. They're not going to park all the way over there, especially for something that has nothing to do with them. <laughs> yeah. Angie's going to be on the phone with the landlord in two seconds flat, saying. This ain't working. 
I, I mean, I would have to see something, you know, some agreement with the current tenants, too, because you're obstructing their exits when they leave the building because there's a complete back exit to that building to the center stairwell. Those people are, which you have the crosswalk, but these people, again, while they're sitting waiting for their coffee, texting on their phone, you know, you got a pedestrian cross right, right across that at 7 o'clock in the morning. Um, yeah, well, we have, there's there's doors here, and... Yep. Uh, um, I see the crosswalk. Yeah, that was something the fire marshal asked for. Which makes sense. That's how you enter and exit the building. All employees are going to be parking back there. But I'm saying delivery, he's going to get as close to the building Absolutely as... Absolutely he is. He's not going to go wheel in his <laughs> whole load. Yeah. Right. Well, I believe most of their deliveries come early in the morning, 3, right. 4 yeah, in the morning. That, his yeah. deliveries aren't by... They... Right. The package store don't open till 9 o'clock. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I saw you going in the other day. <laughs> Be okay. Yeah. So the, the, no. the deliveries, uh, if 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 they're here and they're after and they're not during the peak hours, it's not going to be anybody in the drive-through. There's going to be one or two cars you, in the drive-through. You don't know when his delivery is. You shouldn't be disrupting his business. Well, that that I, that's that's the property owner. Uh, yeah. we, we're they're going to have to. We're a tenant, not we're not the owner, and that's up to the, the owner to to coordinate with his with his other tenants. So <sighs> the owner in taking in this use is accepting that responsibility. Where is the drive through? Right here. And I'm talking about blocking your drive through, though. So you're going to, if yeah, the truck knows. is parked there, your drive through, is, you're going to block all of your cars. You won't have the uh, distance. Well, no, I, think, I think a truck will park out here, not in the. You think? Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. Not in the drive through lane. Any old truck, you know, it doesn't have to be a delivery. They're going to figure it out because you know, as soon as they block somebody, yeah. people will be honking their horns. People in the drive through somebody will be coming out of the business saying, Hey, you need to move your truck. Angie's you know. back door know, but you can't. is right there. Their okay. back door to take deliveries in. So even if he parks over here, he's got to walk through the, uh, the drive through line okay. and go in the back door with his cart okay. with all those cars in the queue. So it's just I think that they'll probably be going the slowest they've ever been going. Well, you're <laughs> disrupting the whole building. <laughs> so. I would want to see something from other tenants or the landlord stating that they've got a mutual agreement. They're willing to lease it, I'm figuring that. They're taking well, maybe that Angie gets a late time delivery. I don't know. It's up to the property owner who he leases it to. Yes, um, you and, can't. And I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what Angie? the plans are for the, for the future, oh. for the, uh, the, other, the I, other spaces. Yeah. Well, we know the one space that's there is already going to be an issue with their deliveries because they get deliveries every day, three, four times a day during the day. <laughs> I understand he gets them at night or early morning, but Angie's isn't open early morning. And, and, and that's not when the drive-through is busy during the day. It's the morning. So you'd let somebody block your driveway during the day just because you're normally not home between nine and five you'd let a truck block your driveway that's what you're saying well the the, the uh that's a that, that's an issue between the tenant and the landlord not that's not, an issue between us. us too because angie's is going to be in here saying why would you let them block our emergency exit and our loading area we're the ones allowing it and the landlord's asking us to allow it and the landlord's not here as far as i know correct correct or the tenant or angie's I mean, they walk out the back door and they're jumping right into possibly oh, traffic. You know, all of them. Any store on the back or on the on the bottom floor has exit out to the parking lot. I don't know. It's up, up, upstairs. Upstairs would... doesn't. They have to go through yeah. the elevator or the common corridor. Right. They can't walk outside. There's no stairs no, but outside. But they can come the down. Floor. They have a back door. Right. They have the Not one main the back door. But he has yeah. that address with the crosswalk. Right. Yeah. They address. But you're still crossing the drive through lane. That's right. My my biggest concern still is you put an ADA bus in spot number one. You eliminated the sight line coming out of that drive through with the people going around the corner. It's gone. I don't know. It was Angie. I don't know how many. I'm just teasing you. 
really. Telling there's three or four deliveries a day. I'm like, really? <laughs> Is it, I don't know if Angie was aware of this. He probably would be here. I, but I, I agree with him. That's really not in our purview. No, but it but it's a safety, the safety uh, issue safety is absolutely. Is and, and those rear egg, uh, exits are their emergency exits. So maybe we um, can. Is there any way, Jen? Yeah, you're hidden behind Dana. Sorry. <laughs> Like um, we can just say to the landlord to please make sure that access to other businesses aren't blocked or whatever. So we're approving it. it well, like you're approving it. The owner did supply a letter um, to the file saying that he, um, Omar Far Farhat, operating manager and owner of 90 Enfield Street in Enfield, Connecticut, give Dunkin' Donuts Corp the right to apply for the changes and the additions to the building for a drive-through, um, and then he gave his contact information for any questions. Um, so can we do, so, maybe you have a sign put up that says no unloading, loading and unloading? That's not fair to Angie's. you got people on a, it's an emergency exit, and it's going to step right out into traffic. Except no, when it, it, they aren't busy. Sidewalk. Yeah, the, the, you step out, there's a sidewalk. You're not, you're not stepping out into traffic. You have, a, you have an opportunity to see if there's anyone in the drive through If there is, you can walk down to the crosswalk here. They and, come out their back here. door, and there's a crosswalk there. Talking about Angie's? Yeah, from sidewalk. Angie's emergency. No, you'd walk yeah. down the yeah, sidewalk you'd have to, to the center. you take a left, right down to the center, and then, and then cross. I thought their back door is right up against the... Um, yeah. there, there were pictures that were on your desk. I think one of the pictures, the last one, showed the back of the building. Um, so if you want to take a look at that. Because I have a question, Dana. In, yeah. okay. in terms of, I, I guess the, 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 the top end of the stacking area, it appears that you have an easement with Eversource, but, but your drive lane actually goes through the easement because you, you, okay. you're, the island that you relocated hasn't been reloca re relocated far enough to, I guess, the southwest. Yeah. That, this, this right here? Yeah. This easement? Right. Well, I, I guess I'm looking. You know, I, I think that the this is the easement line right here. This is your easement line. It's going like straight through these cars. Your easement line realistically should be going over here. There's no picture of the back of the building. So yeah, well, well, yeah. There's there's this line, but then there's this also this this uh, uh, common access agreement, which is uh, involving um, 90 as well as uh, as well as 66. So I think that's why. But that's why I put the arrow. I was trying to. I was actually trying to keep traffic from going this way. Is the, the idea? So, the, so. Okay. So, so they have that triangle as part of the easement from Eversource for this property. Right. So. All right. I, as long as it extends that far. Okay. Thank you. What do you want? Yeah. Yeah. I see it. It's not on the plans. Oh. Yeah. But it's not on the plan. It's Can I say something, Charlie? Can I say something? Sure. What do we? What is? Yeah. What is the landlord planning on doing with the condition of the parking lot right at the main entrance? I, I'm going to be fixing it. You're fixing it. I think that was one of the conditions Thank of you. approval, too, in the staff report. Yeah. Is that those be repaired? How far out of the way from the building is the uh, traffic, the <coughs> traffic uh, lead for the window? Because there's a fire lane back there, too. Incorporated the fire lane. Say that again. There's a fire lane right up against the building, all the way down the back. Up against the sidewalk. Here. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, the the drive-through lane will be here, so this will be the fire lane. The aisle. Got to move the signs, right? <laughs> Did the fire marshal approve that? Yeah. They, we had a we had a. Fires on the comments. So. Okay. We're okay with it. 
was wondering how he was unloading all that time. There's five deliveries a day in the fire lane. He must have parked there. <laughs> he must. You know, if you're going to be close to the building to unload his truck before, the liquor truck, he's right up against the building. Well, yeah, he would be. <laughs> yeah. That's what I said. I was... Okay. Anyone else? No, for now? Okay. Anyone in the, uh, this is a, this is so far. Anyone in the audience would like to speak in favor or against this application? Anyone in the audience speak in favor or against this application? Last call to speak in favor or against the application. Anything from, uh, So we put some um, conditions on there, uh, let me grab. just really that um, from the pictures that we provided, there was one of them was the, um, there was some like small debris items in the landscaping around the property. We just said that that should be cleaned up. Um, and then of course the repair of the potholes, the catch base and the curbing um, around the site for compliance with the site maintenance section of the regulations should be done. Um, other than that, the other items that you've listed as potential conditions of approval would be um, addressing all the police comments, um, fixing the aero arrows on the site circulation, um, correcting the neighboring address on the, um, on the site plans, and um, putting a stop sign near the uh, drive through um, and I don't know how you want to address the um, Angie's deliveries. Maybe just have their delivery area shown on the site plans, and that would take some sort of collaboration. That would be helpful. Yeah, okay. And do we have to separate? Do we have to separately vote on the waiver for the landscaping, or can we that just be included in the? Uh, um, you can just sort of, if you wanted to determine that the current state um, of the. Um, property is as existing as acceptable, you can sort of make that um, determination. So it's not really, you're not waiving anything. Uh, John, I don't know, usually the engineering has requirements for the dumpster now, is he doing that? So we did hold an ART on this, um, and I, um, at that time, uh, they've addressed pretty much everything. Um, that came came from that ART from all of those comments, uh, but th at that point, uh, yeah, John did the, um, he did address that uh, a concrete pad um, detail should be added to the plans for the dumpster and um, the for the paving, the new paving that's going in. So, um, and then we did ch when we did the site plan review, we did check to make sure that all ART comments were addressed. But you have the new. Uh application for 90 Enfield Street. What number are, are you have the uh, dumpster on? Um, no, I'm looking for your the conditions. That's right. That's what I'm saying. This is the dumpster detail. That's what I have as a new one. I'm talking to this Charlie, not you. <laughs> well, yeah. Too many of you. Where is it on? That's what's going on. Eight, eight, eight. Shoot, eight, eight. Oh, I think they're looking for the... <laughs> it's I know. On the plans, it's on the plans. It's on the plans. But we've been through a couple of court cases and the CEO and wouldn't have enforced unless it's in here. So make a condition. It should be on site specific, I would guess. Well, usually the engineering requires uh, a screened uh, dumpster with a certain concrete pad yeah it's it's shown on the plan I that I understand but it's not in the conditions but it's on the plan so it's approved with because the CEO reads the plan. sometimes it's not enforced I've been through this plenty of times okay you want to add that it's as not commission an internal conditions. problem not an external gotcha. it depends <laughs> on who's sitting upstairs <laughs> Or 
there's always is on there. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Added it. It's not there. The, the, the only thing that I see as a conflict for that is is that on his plan he calls for a chain link enclosure, and on his detail he calls for a solid PVC That's right. enclosure. So there, there right. is a discrepancy between the plan and the detail. So that we we can sort of you know indicate which which our preference would be whether we would want the chain link or you know the, the solid PVC. Solid because solid keeps the debris from yeah. blowing through. It around. might be a chain link with those plastic. Things yeah, with privacy slats. So which, whichever you prefer, Carlos said he'll if you have a preference for one or the other. Um, it's enclosed. I yes, think, I think yes. he wanted to do the chain link with the privacy slats, but if you prefer the vinyl, he's willing to do that too. Slats, slats break. The well, the vinyl fence you. doesn't last. The yeah. gates and everything. I the would chain have link's to agree a little more durable. Him. The chain link with the slats is much more durable. Yep. Oh, the oh, slats right. really make it look very nice. That's what they want. Yeah. But how about the base? It's a uh, oh, a concrete slab. Yeah, but it, he has certain depth or whatever, a certain requirement. Yeah. Under the ART, um, John Kabibbo had asked that it be, I think, eight inches in uh, depth for the concrete pad for the dumpster, and that uh, we did check to see, and it, the detail does reflect that. All right. Quick thing. There was no comments from the health district. They were at the ART as well. They were? Yeah, one of their comments was, uh, their, well, their only comment was regarding grease removal, um, whether or not there was going to be any storage in the dumpster area, and if so, they wanted the dumpster area enlarged to make room for that. And Carlos tells me that they don't plan to have any grease storage at the uh, at the dumpster they have a, a company that comes in and cleans out their internal grease grease trap and just removes it from the site so there's never any storage okay thank you i didn't i okay, didn't think so they cook the donuts on site anymore you don't cook them cook donuts on site no no so what what grease would you have they're uh, just a free base thing uh, yeah minimal are you all set? We're, okay, I got to open it once more until unless we're done. Anyone in the audience who want to speak in favor or against this application? Anyone in, in the audience who would like to speak in favor or against this application? Last call to speak in favor or against the application. Jen, you're all set? Yep. Okay, then I'll, I'll close public <laughs> hearing. 2940. I got that one right. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve public hearing 294090 Enfield Street, um, dated it, it, as prepared by the planning department, dated um, with today's date, the, the 23rd of May, um, with the conditions listed, with the, I guess, 28 conditions listed, with some additional site specific conditions. To include the following, that the chain link uh, fence around the dumpster is to, is to be sl have sl the, privacy the, the privacy screens. There's going to be an indication for the deliveries, a, lo a delivery um, parking location for other tenants that are in, in a, on a property. Um, a, a stop sign is going to be added at the end of the, the exit area from the drive-through. The, the Police comments are going to be included in the um, revised final plan drawings. The arrows that are shown on the, the the arrows that are confusing as to being in the wrong direction are going to be resolved and, and changed. And then the address of the adjacent property is 88 Enfield Street instead of 78 in Enfield Street. Did I miss any? I, don't, I guess we don't need, because you said, according to the engineer's right. office, so we don't need the concrete pad depth. Okay. Right. Any questions from the commission? Any discussion? Yeah. Motion's been made. Did I have a second? Can he discussion. Do it? Okay. I, I'm going to have to vote against this only due to the fact that the drive through traffic is exiting blindly into the incoming traffic to get to the drive through with a van in that handicapped spot 
you have zero sight line. He's even agreed they're going to have to inch out slowly. People don't do that at 7 o'clock in the morning on their way to work. And it, it's just a very, very bad safety issue right there that needs to be addressed. That is my only concern with this whole thing. If they could eliminate that parking spot where nobody parks there, because even if you make it a regular spot, you still could have a, a van parked there. But if no spot is there, at least it would increase the sight line well, for have, the traffic. They have the number of parking spots. Why can't they eliminate it? It's an ADA it's spot. Space. They would just have to move it. Oh, they have to have That's it. right. Yeah. It could be further down. They, could, they do. could move it down. They can go ahead and make condition. That could well, be. I, I want to. I mean, it's their plan. I don't want to. But that that would be my only reason to vote against it. And well, so we're having the discussion. If that's what you want to do, yeah. uh, I have to agree with Kenny. Uh, only after my experience on the site last night at five o'clock with minimal traffic, what I saw and the maneuverability to go in and around cars that are queued up at the light. Um, that, that was my concern when I pulled in last night. I didn't think about it until it, I actually experienced it. Um, so, and I agree with that handicap spot, definitely would block view if somebody had a van there. Even if they, you put it as a regular spot, and somebody pulls in with a, a work truck. Um, we could eliminate one space in the front and and just leave that. Either expand the island, um, or or how wide is that space? Fifteen feet. Well, a handicap space, fifteen. Right. But but we would eliminate one of the regular because we can't eliminate the handicap space. Right. But you could we, move it down. Right. We could move it down. We could eliminate right, a regular. So you gain nine feet. If you lost would, one that space. would be a compromise I would accept yeah hey, anything's better than the way it is right now well what would have to be then we'd have to uh, just increase the size of that median no but we'd have to withdraw the, the second and the motion uh, uh, and then like uh, uh, they'd have to agree to it and that and uh, we can amend the motion. We just well, have to reopen. Well, we, well I, we can amend the motion to include as a as a you know site specific condition that you know one parking spot be eliminated in the front of the building. So handicap be eliminated. No, 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 no. no, 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 no handicap. No. The handicap is just going to be moved. Rich has got it yeah. right. Where the handicap will be moved over so that the sight line would be increased for the people exiting from the the drive-through area well, you and that, that peninsula that right, right that right, peninsula right, right, is right. to be expanded nine feet correct nine feet yeah so that way right. nobody can park right. there and, and, and looking at the parking calculations they they have provided 48 and, and all their require is 38 so that you know they have the, the, mm -hmm. the ability to remove a space or two okay so we still so have I'm, to withdraw the second and the motion because you're going to add that to your uh, conditions, conditions. Okay. I think you, or I, could I just modify? If you just say if you want to say amend and then someone has to second it. Oh, uh, amend. Uh, and then, okay. right, amend the right. motion. Right. right. You so, accept the amendment? Yes, I accept okay. the amendment. And you you have no problem with it either. Okay. Okay. So I can amend it now. Okay. So yeah, I, I, I can make it official. I'd amend my motion to include the, the elimination of that parking spot okay, so we'll in the front. The amendment well. Parking number one gets moved over towards the northeast. And becomes an island. Correct. It becomes an island. You don't want Correct. anybody in there. Correct. Okay. Now, any and that motion has been amended. Is there any addition? Uh, any any questions? Any problems? I, I could I ask a question? There was. Uh, I'm, no, I'm sorry. I, no, no, it's our discussion. Can no. I can, can I talk to Jen about it? I. Is that right? Maybe later. But now uh, you can talk to her all you want. Okay, people. We didn't make a waiver yet. Do you do don't. Do you need a waiver? What are they? Yeah. Jen said that it would be incorporated in the. Yeah, that's what I thought she said. Right. So we don't have to do a specific. No. Okay. Well, we'd have to amend our motion because I don't see it as a site specific condition that the landscaping. The, uh, It's on the thing that, we, that was left at our desk tonight, one of the conditions. 
Did, did you know which Laurie's one it is? Laurie's letter. No, Laurie's letter. No. Well, the, the conditions that we have do not address that. No, we don't have to address it per the assistant town planner. Right, but, but it, it, that the draft resolution that we have does not address allowing a variance for landscaping is what I'm saying. Waiver. A waiver, I mean. Okay. I have to go back. Give me a minute. All right. I, I don't see it here. If it's not there, it's got to get in there. Well, no, the regulations provide that you can sort of just determine in your review that um, the landscaping that as it exists, since you're not really expanding the facility, is, is acceptable. So it's not necessarily something that needs to be part of the motion as it's, you, it's not really a, a waiver. It's something that you just sort of determined. And I mean. Where are we with that? So basically I'm comfortable with the waiver with regards to the landscaping. If you want to make sure that we can do the waiver after this. We well, it's all concrete and pavement. Mm -hmm. The main, main motion. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. If you need a, I mean, the only way. landscaping on the entire property is the little strip up by Route Five. Yeah, right. I, I, and I, if you look at his facilities, he's going to make that plaza a hundred times nicer than what it is right I, now. I know. I, I know. Uh, but somebody, they're I'm talking so. waivers. Yes, I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm comfortable. Mm -hmm. Technically speaking, you can't really waive. Um, the zoning regulations, but what you basically because the regulations provide that you can say that the landscaping on the property is acceptable as is since he's not really expanding anything by simply approving this, you're really just saying that it meets you're the requirements of the zoning regulations. Landscaping yes. be approved as the frontage Again, does not have adequate space for plantings. Right. So by but basically, that's why I a, asked you, yeah. and you said it was okay. Yeah. In a, in approving the application, it would be like saying it meets the regulations, hmm. and that's why it would meet that specific regulation. Yep. So we don't need to do a separate vote. No. Yeah, we're comfortable with that too. It, I mean, you do what you, whatever you feel is best, but uh, we're we're comfortable with without a formal waiver. Okay, so now where are we? we... <laughs> right. Okay, okay I know, but are you all set with this? Yes, I just want to make sure we covered our bases. Right. Okay. All, uh, all in favor as amended. <laughs> Opposed. Unanimous. Thank you. Fine. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Good catch, Ken. Yeah. Well, I, it, 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 it's existing that way. I don't know how you can make it change it. I don't want to muddy the waters. Okay. Public hearing 2941. Uh, Secretary, please take the roll and read the legal notice for 2941. 359 Hazard Avenue, a special use permit application. The Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, May 23rd, 2019 at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing 2941, 359 Hazard Ave, special use permit application for a medical office to be located on the first floor of the building within the limited office overlay zone, 359 Hazard Avenue, LLC, Constantinoso, Constant, I'm going to. I'll help you. Per, per, owner applicant, map 92, lot 1, Hasville, um, Zone uh, 33, limited office overlay zone, Hazaville Design District overlay zone. Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Mary Scott. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. John Petronella. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Uh, alternate DeGray will be sitting in for missing commissioner. Gentlemen, if you will, introduce yourselves. 
Uh, good evening. My name is Michael Bonanno, B-O-N-A-N-N-O. -N -N I'm an attorney at Tavano, McEwen, Bonanno, and Collins, and that's in Glastonbury, Connecticut. Uh, with me today is Arthur Hall. He's our architect, and I also have the owner, Dr. Constantinos. It's Dr. Constantinos Constantino, just for the, for the record. <laughs> Um, uh, if, as a matter of housekeeping, if I may, I have the uh, sign applicate or the affidavit for posting the public sign. If I may submit that. Uh, another minor matter of housekeeping: we did submit some revised plans today. I think you have them in your packets, and we would just like to respectfully request that they be made part of the application in the hearing tonight. There was just some minor revisions with regard in, in response to some of the, the staff comments. We added some uh, some little details that that Art can go into uh, in greater detail later. Uh, as you know, with the packet, you've got a narrative from us, and I'll save you the burden of having to uh, to hear um, the entire have me repeat it verbatim. I do want to provide some additional context, though, if I may, and then of course we're happy to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, Dr. Constantino purchased the property at the end of 2018. Uh, it's located in the Hazardville section of town. Uh, if you're familiar with it, it's a, it's a very attractive, aesthetically attractive building that was built in 1864. It was used as the Hazardville Grammar School for just over 100 years, I believe. Uh, its most recent use was that it was occupied by a daycare center. But it had been vacant for, I believe, it was a couple of years. I'm not sure. Uh, Dr. Constantino did purchase the property from a bank that had done a foreclosure, so it had been uh, vacant until that point. Uh, it's a very attractive building that Dr. Constantino saw the potential to renovate it, to reuse the property, so that it would continue to be a functioning asset of the community. Uh, it's located, as I said, within that Hazardville Design District and therefore by reference in the limited office overlay zone where a medical office, which is what we're proposing, uh, is permitted by special permit. Uh, thankfully, your zoning regulations do recognize the fact that the use of the property may change uh, over time, but that doesn't mean that the bones or the physical structure of the building can't continue to serve as a reminder of the town's culture and interesting past. So our proposed renovation is to convert just a portion of the lower floor of the building. It's on the southwest uh, uh, portion of the, of the existing building. And Art can point that out to you in a moment. Uh, it's been, like as I said, vacant and underutilized. Um, other than some minor improvements to the exterior, there's uh, some issues we have to uh, address with regard to the facade. Uh, but there's really going to be uh, just minor improvements to the exterior, such as restriping the parking lot uh, and installing some traffic signs per staff comments and regulations. But the majority of the renovations uh, are going to be limited to the building's interior. Uh, so the application that we have proposes uh, kind of a use what we have approach, uh, where it's consistent with the mantra of the reuse, reduce, and recycle mantra that we hear, and I agree with. Uh, there's no demolition required. Uh, we're using the existing building, of course, and uh, the energy that would be normally associated with the manufacturing of materials for constructing a new building uh, is going to be avoided or at, or at a minimum, or at least minimized. So this adaptive reuse of an antiquated building that's, that holds a lot of value for the town is going to provide a medical office, which is a real service that I think meets the town's uh, needs. It's accessible by pedestrians, and it maintains the character and charm of the neighborhood. Uh, let's face it, you might go your entire life without needing legal help or avoiding uh, having to hire an attorney, but we're all going to need medical services, and I think that it's a valuable uh, asset and service that the community could use. Uh, as I said, it's going to be accessible by pedestrians. There's a sidewalk right in front. It's consistent with the intent of the Hazardville Overlay District, also the Limited Office District, and as well as the Plan of Conservation and Development. It, in fact, it was actually specifically designated and listed as a notable resource. Um, so we're going to preserve the historical architectural qualities that are consistent with that period. Uh, we obviously recognize we have to comply with the other specific regulations of the various sections, and, and if you have some questions about that, uh, our, our, our 
our architect can certainly fill in some of those gaps. I have questions. <laughs> All right. Um, I was over there last night. And I said <laughs> Made I your way around. Yeah, yes, sure. Yeah. yeah, I do get around. Good. Um, there was a couple of things that northeast corner, the bricks are falling off of the facade. That's right. That was a big concern right there. It was like a big red flag. Um, but I'm sure you're going to do something, cord it off or whatever, so people won't park over there. That's right. That, that is going to be addressed. Uh, I talked to my client. He can certainly fill, uh, you know, supplement my response. But uh, because it's a historical structure, he is working with uh, the state uh, historical society to Good. address that. Uh, now, my next question is: Is um, how are you going to get handicapped people in wheelchairs into this facility? Because when you go into the front entrance. <coughs> There's stairs that go up to that first floor, and if you go to the side entrance, the exact same thing, and having had to push people in wheelchairs for a very long period of time mm. in my life, it's difficult. And so how are you going to that? I don't see how that's being addressed, and I'm sure the architect will take us through that. I haven't actually shown it on the plan yet, but uh, I think probably we wind up having to put a little lift in that front uh, uh, stairway to get up those four risers uh, in the front. Uh, I would have loved to have done a ramp up there, but there's not enough space for it. Uh, so I think I'm probably going to have to do a lift. Okay, and another question is, um, are they going to be going to go through the front door or the side door to enter into this office building? Uh, they would go through the front door. The front door. Okay, that, that was my concern is to have to go all the way around to the side. And okay. Yeah, we're, we're only using a very limited portion of the building. Yeah, I see uh, that. Which really is just the, and uh, at the senior later edition, yeah, uh, the, the front portion, which is a later door, edition. Yeah, um, and the, the back part wouldn't even be open for the. Yeah, yeah. The mic is an honor. Well, move that one over, yeah. You might have put it close to your mouth. Um, we're only using the, the the front portion of the building. Uh, you know, initially the public uh, wouldn't be allowed to, you know, into the back portion. Um, you know, which um, it you know, wouldn't have been renovated by that point. Okay. Well, I'm glad somebody's going to use the building, but those were the two big concerns I had when I went over there last night. I, I have a quick question. In terms of you indicate that you're going to put a lift in there. In terms of you know, I'm, I'm just looking at your plan. Is there enough room for the lift and for somebody to use the stairs in, in that stairwell, or how, how is that going to fit with, with, you know, because normally a lift is, has to fit a wheelchair, so it's going to be four feet wide. Your stair width that you have there right now is probably, it, I don't know what it scales, but it doesn't look like it scales more than, you know, six feet wide. So you can't put a lift in there and have an, an active steer. A wheelchair, a wheelchair is 30 inches wide. A, a lift, uh, you know, um, then I was thinking of an inclined uh, lift uh, that would be uh, just on one side of the stair, and there should be adequate space left on the side. Uh, you know, but for, but, but for in terms of if, if this whole building is being utilized and there's 150 people in there, that you, you have certain, you know, width exit requirements. So you need a certain width of exit to, in, in order to be maintained, you know, yes, all the people uh, getting out. And eventually, I guess what, what we're looking at is that the building will be totally utilized. So that, you know, again, you know, I think that it, you, you need to address it or show us a plan as to how it fits in there. You know, I yeah, that, that all of that will be dealt with in the building plans. Um, OK, uh, you know, so, so, so you're, you're not planning on doing any ramps on the outside, because if there's something on the outside, we get involved. Right. So so what you're saying is that if you do need a ramp, you're going to do it internally or else you will definitely put in an elevator or a lift or something else that would be utilized. My next comment is that you, you indicate that the people won't be allowed to, to use the back of the building, but I'm just looking at your plans and there's only one toilet room that's shown. And oh, there's a big one over there. All right, so, so, but, but, so, 
is 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 there a differentiation between you know what's available cuz i'm i'm looking at the, the the proposed medical office i know when i go to the doctors and he wants me to give him a urine sample and and you have to go you know into a bathroom or something so that you can wash your hands and do everything like that after you're done with with one of those samples so so but so and but i don't see that you have any access in, in your you know That's in your detail i know it, yeah i know it. but but but, the, but, but I, what i'm saying is that you know did you did they have to go in, into you know a toilet area that's out in in a hallway to, to do you do that or are they going to be doing it's only a preliminary uh, you know uh, concept of how it might look. Um, the bathrooms would have to be redone to provide, uh, you know, the necessary, uh, uh, you know, number of toilets. All of that is controlled by the building code, uh, and and you know, we will totally comply with what the the requirements of the building code are when we actually develop the final plan inside. And this is really only a preliminary plan. He might not be that kind of doctor that he needs samples. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we recognize that there will be some challenges as we go on with the remediation on the interior, uh, and we and we take staff comments to heart. Uh, I know the building uh, department gave a lot of heads up comments, which were useful, and of course they do have to comply with all ADA codes and regulations as well as building code and state code regulations. But and certainly we will, or otherwise they won't get the approvals that that we're looking for, the certificates of uh, occupancy. I have to say that I'm very happy that the building is going to be used. I've, I've watched it for years, and I'm glad that somebody's going to save it, and I appreciate that he's going to do that. I'm also appreciative of the fact that before anyone else goes in there, each time they have to is come back to us. That would be very helpful. I'm sure that the, the doctor will want good tenants, and I'm sure he will pick and choose at will, but I'm very happy that they'll come back to us first. Thank so. You. Thank you for considering the building. Thank you. I was going to say, the last time I was in that building, the town was using it for storage of voting machines in the back, <laughs> the back section. Wow. When was that, if I may? Oh, I, <laughs> <laughs> quite a while ago. A <laughs> <laughs> couple months ago, yeah. Anybody else on the commission? OK. Uh, I'll open it to the oh. audience. What? I just, does he ant anticipate what he's going to want to use these back classrooms for in the future? I think at this point, uh, no, I don't think he's got an idea. That, you know, he just purchased the property under six months ago. This is something that, uh, you know, stuck out to him as a way that he can utilize the property right away. And the rest of it is kind of uh, a puzzle that we're trying to put together. And, and I think Art's got the heavy lifting on that. But, uh, no, there's a lot of possibilities. Huh. It's a beautiful building that can accommodate a lot of different uses, um, similar ones, associated ones, but uh, at this point, uh, his focus is simply on the single medical office. If his practice is successful, he may want more doctors back there. Yeah, that's a good point, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Anyone in the audience would like to speak in favor or against this application? Yes, please come forward. Name and address, please. I think I. Oh. Uh, yeah, you'll have to vacate and let her sit down. Oh. Good evening, Gretchen Pfeiffer Hall, Four Summers Road. Um, so my husband and I own some properties in the neighborhood right up the street. And so I think we're also happy to see something happen with the building. But as I think everybody's aware, it is a National Register um, Historic District, a very important contributing resource. So we would want to, and I'm sure the whole community would want to make sure that the facade is, um, is addressed. It needs a new roof. The bricks need repointing. They're falling off. Um, they're falling off because the roof is, is deteriorating. There are windows in the attic area that are falling apart. So uh, I think they mentioned that they were working with the um, state historic well, SHPO, I imagine. So um, 
I think that it's important that the facade be maintained and, and restored um, to, to its original condition. Um, so they didn't really answer a question that somebody asked was my question was what is the, what's the big plan for the building? I find it kind of hard to believe that you would purchase a building as large as that and not have some sort of idea um, as to what you're going to do with it because we, we can't really see the plans back there but it looks like they're only using a, a fraction of, of the building so and as far as the parking area goes I think it needs more than striping it's in pretty poor condition and I'd like to know what the hours are going to be and um, how many how many vehicles will probably be going in and out of there and is the area on the west side of the building which I think was a playground area when it was a, when it was the school and the daycare what's going to happen with that um, and Are there any um, hazardous materials um, concerns with, with the renovation of the building? So those are just some questions that come to mind. And I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to speak in favor or against this application? Yes, please come forward again, name and address. Haven't seen her in a while. Hi, Karen LaPlante, 166 North Maple Street. Um, I too am happy to see somebody, you know, renovate this building and try to save the historic quality of the um, of the area. Um, I went to fifth grade grammar school there, and uh, so that's how old it goes back for me. Um, a long time ago. Well, Charlie says he was. <laughs> He could point out his classroom. <laughs> <laughs> um, the one thing that I didn't hear addressed was landscaping. Um, I don't know what's required there, but Gretchen touched on the, the west side um, or the left side of the building that used to be all p paved and playground area. I don't know if any of that can be returned to some kind of landscaped, you know, area or whatever but there's it's all paving so if anything can be returned i don't know what the requirements are in the hasville village area for you know that type of thing but it would be nice if we could see some some things done down there but uh that facade hopefully nothing will change there because it's got beautiful detail in the bricks and the um everything else so thank you Anyone else to address the commission for or against the application? Okay. It's all right. Just, just one more point. I mean, I know that it was a daycare, and so there was traffic going in and out, um, but it just, and nobody's raised the fact that there is a playground right across the street and so um, and the only access to get into that parking area on the east side of the building is off of school street so um, it would be nice if you asked some questions about the traffic and egress and how many vehicles are going in and out Anyone else? The applicant want to address any of the questions? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mike Bonanno again for the record, and thanks for the comments. Uh, I think for a couple points, um, 
Dr. Constantino does intend to restore uh, the building to its original condition to the best of his ability. This is going to be uh, a Class A office building or medical office, uh, and I'm sure the tenant, whoever that's going to be, uh, is going to is going to require that it uh, it appears in in pristine condition, the best that he can make it, including the parking lot. If there's any defects in the parking lot that are unsafe or uh, unsightly, he's going to make those repairs. Uh, the hours, I believe, were uh, limited to what the regulations state. I believe it's eight to eight. Uh, I, I can't imagine the op you know medical office would be open that full span, but uh, I know that the regulations do address that. Uh, with regard to um, the playground, and tr uh, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, I don't know, Art, if you have any other um, you know information about what, how we can handle that. I know that we're going to try to clean it up as best as possible. And, and make it look, uh, you know, to present as best as possible too. Uh, with regard to the traffic, obviously, or I think it's, it's uh, I believe it's supported that uh, daycare, there's going to be more traffic. I mean, there's pickups and drop-offs uh, two, three times a day, uh, whereas a, uh, a single medical office, I believe it's, you know, you're not gonna be able to, to entertain as much traffic. Uh, and, and the, we are stuck with the, the egress coming out on School Street the way that it is. Uh, but, of course, the playground that exists is across that street there, so uh, we don't believe there will be that much interaction, and I think the traffic will be relatively uh, limited. No parking for that one either. No. Jamie has a question. Okay. okay. Jamie. Yes, um, Several of the, the people who talked were discussing uh, preserving the building. I just want to make sure I understood uh, the premise that you're going to continue to keep the front facade as it is i mean you're going to clean it up and repoint it put the bricks back but you're not going to move a doorway or change the windows or anything like that that's correct there is no uh no proposal at, at this time for that or desire thank you sure okay i had saw a hand up in the audience if you wish to come forward it will go do this do so now You, you had Karen. your hand up? Karen. Karen. I don't know, Karen. It was a person next to you. I saw the hand, but that's all right. Karen LaPlante, 166. Just a quick question on parking lot lighting, because I don't think there's any parking lot lights at this time. And if it was going to be parking lot lights, you know, kinds and all that kind of stuff. Not on the plan. But all right, come on. Hall, uh, Four Summers Road, and uh, Excuse me, sir. talk into the, the microphone. Mic. Oh, you. sorry. Televised. Here, if you get over here. Well, you can move the mic, but you can. Hi, this is Lloyd Hall from Four Summers Road. Boy, there's an echo. Um, so, I just want to make it make sure I'm also appreciative that because we've got the house we're trying to restore just up the street. Uh, which was, you know, vacant for like 10 years and had all kinds of problems, and I'm sure some of you are aware of that. Um, and it's a long-term process to restore anything, we found out. But here's the question also is, and we talk about the thing across the street. Well, uh, since I'm in a very visual spot when I'm working there every day, I look at the whole street going down to the park, and there's people that always show up with their cars uh, even on the side streets there where they're playing hoop on the uh, basketball court that's out there in the playground. So there is uh, also traffic that goes there. Sometimes trucks will even park on that side going right down to the street. So there is a little bit of traffic that is there and there are people that are egressing over to the park and then back to the park and it's and there's a lot of people that walk around the whole block and they love the area and that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, we just got to be conscious of all that. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Gentlemen, you wish to come forward again or? Uh, just briefly, I think. Uh, 
Certainly we'll comply. Uh, we're going to be installing some uh, traffic signs, some, some stop signs, two stop signs at the property, uh, uh, and, and restriping everything. And uh, you know, to, the, to the extent that we can control any of those traffic or safety concerns, we certainly will, and that's our intent. Uh, but I don't know how we could control you know, people walk around the neighborhood, et cetera. But uh, certainly we'll comply with all of the regulations, yes. And, and the lighting that she asked about, uh, yes. are you going to have lighting on the side of the building uh, where the uh, parking lot is? You know, I'm not sure, actually, at this point in time, uh, how we're going to address that. I suppose it depends a little bit on the tenant, perhaps the hours that they're going to be, uh, that they're going to be working. But for safety and security purposes, I would expect that that would probably, you know, be something that he's going to want to, to install. But in all honesty, I don't have that, those details at this point. Yes. Go ahead, sir. Um, a couple questions. These plans are kind of very vague. Are, along the front of the property, along Hazard Avenue, are there any street trees? Along the property, uh, along Hazard Avenue, are there any street trees currently existing? Uh, yeah, I, think, I believe there are a couple small saplings, if I recall, when I was out there. I don't recall. You know, I, I, yeah, I've only been out there a couple times. I don't recall if... Uh... Jen, can you check and see if this meets... Because, I mean, they spent a lot of money on Hazardville Center with the brick pavers and the street lights and stuff like that. I understand the cost of renovating the building. It can't be done overnight. Look at the Hazardville Institute, and that's with public funds. It's been millions and how many years with no current use of the building. He's trying to make a use of the building. I understand Rome wasn't built overnight. It's going to take him time to get it back up because... Many people, including the town, neglected it for so many years. Absolutely. It takes time. I commend him for taking on a big project. I understand you start with baby steps, and that's what he's doing. And I just, I also will say the facade of the building is very important that it stays the same and is corrected sooner than later before it gets too far out of hand. And the only requirement that I would ask for at this time would be that uh, um, streetscape is within um, the normal of the Hazardville district. And if any trees have died or anything has changed, that they be planted back. There were trees on the tree belt last time I looked, but that doesn't mean they're here now. No, well, I understand, Charlie, but the problem is there's nothing on our plan showing and I want to, so just as a condition. Well, the town takes them down usually without. Right, they make them put them up and the town yeah, takes yeah, them down. Yeah. But still, I want to, you know, Hazardville's beautiful with the, you know, paver walks and everything. Oh, yeah. and it was until they yeah. did the cement. Right, I'm not willing to push the building egress. The building's been there since 18, what, 50. Cars have been coming in and out no of there. Idea. Nothing's going to change. Yeah, so. It's the original back building or because that was built twice. Yeah, the, this, rear, the rear portion seems to be a lot older than the It is. Portion. Yeah, that was built. That, that back is the original school, and then they added the front. I don't know what year. So I would just... There, right? I wasn't there, no. <laughs> I would just ask that it... <laughs> and I didn't go to that school oh, wow. either. <laughs> but I've been, as I said, I've been in there for the voting, voting yeah. machines. There are, um, I pulled it up on Google Maps, the street view. It appears that there are two trees um, in the front of that building, um, along with a couple um, light posts. Um, I measured on the um, Enfield GIS what the frontage is. It's approximately 200 feet. Um, and I think the, the regulations require one tree per each 50 feet. So if you, you can, again, it's a, similar to the last application, if you can decide um, that what is existing on a property that's not really being changed is okay, or you can require that they, under the public hearing, you can require that they comply. So that's your determination. Well, I would just ask that the streetscape be brought up. You know, plant, if there's two trees missing, plant the two trees. My mic's on. Okay. Other than that, I'm good with it. I thank them for taking a chance with Enfield. Oh, absolutely. That, that, when I saw it come in, I said oh boy that's great because it's been sitting there it's a good use for the say, building the, the town the town had it for a while yep and then sold it <clears throat> okay again anyone in the audience would like to speak in favor or against anyone in the audience favor or against last call for this evening favor or against 
Gentlemen, are you all set? I think so. Thank you. Yes. Is the commission all set for now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, what do you want to do? Close, do you wish to close it, or is there a reason for you to continue it, or what is your desire you want? Jen? Um, just looking at the um, uh, memo that uh, Lori sent out, the uh, conditions, um, we put the 27 standard conditions on there. Um, you'll notice that site-specific <laughs> condition number nine, um, we didn't change that. It says just will be added for each unique application. So you can eliminate that or you can just change it to a condition if you have one that you want to um, Well, if make. you want, you want to add that on your trees is what she's saying, I think. Well, well, I think we, what we should what we should add is is that the comments made by the different you know commissions be included as a site specific condition in terms of um, I think the police have some you know there's no fire lanes noted on the plans the handicap sign is you know what what happens with with the I guess the westerly most driveway stop sh signs and you know that that the I guess the that health department has some comments too so i think that you know as a as a stipulation we should just include all the, the requirements that the the different departments have in town mm -hmm. um and then the fact that they, they meet the, the the landscaping requirements or upgrade the landscaping requirements you know obviously you know i I'm, i support this reuse definitely and and i you know i just have some concerns being in a construction business where older buildings are, are really difficult to upgrade and that you know they they need to be upgraded to, to today's standards and you know i and i think that you know the, the the building department and everybody else is going to make sure that you know it complies and is safe for everybody who's utilizing the building so right. in that sense i feel comfortable that those standard conditions plus what we just indicated should be fine i took number nine to mean uh that this would be for future applications if they had site specific conditions it would apply to future applications where they came in with the uh, when you decided who what he was going to do with the rest of the building well number nine so we have a template for the conditions that we put on so we have all of the regular standard ones that go for all of the special permits um, and that's just a placeholder that Raquel and I use um, just so that we know so that we have a section of those conditions where we can well, put the site-specific ones they make changes they've got to come in uh, I, but Kenny, uh, Ken's suggesting that you add the trees. He wanted the two yes. trees on the streetscape mm -hmm. planted. Yep. So. Well, I want the front to meet the hazard bill. I agree with Ken. It's very important well, to keep the overlay district right. Well, you want the trees now right. or when, uh, later? I, uh, that's well, now. now. Well, uh, all right. Uh, the side of the sidewalk are they on? Mm -hmm. the street? They're um, along the right of way. So a site-specific condition would be number nine right now is that presently you want two trees added. Two street trees, yeah. Street trees. Overlay district. You're right. Yeah. All right, so I, I will close. Uh, yeah, but who's the question to? All right, Jen, another question. Do these gentlemen, these gentlemen have these? statements by the um, I'm not sure uh, did did you receive the email okay yes thank you and in fact we yes. updated the plan with <laughs> to reflect the, well, that's the, some uh, of the comments that are striking yeah. okay. Okay. okay I didn't want to require you to do them without you having them see okay. them. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Right. 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 right all right okay so right. are we set on um, 8.7 you ready for me to close yes yes okay and then I'll, I'll close public hearing 2941 Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve public hearing 941, 359 Hazard Avenue, in accordance with the, um, I, I guess, draft, draft resolution dated May 14th, um, as prepared by the, the planning department with the standard 27 conditions, and then we're going to add some additional con conditions to include that the remarks of the various departments of the town be a part of this, you know, approved application that they include, you know, that their 
comments as part of their future development and you know the, when they come back to for further review and the fact that the landscaping requirements meet you know section 8.7 which is the hazardville design district so that you know and our st standard regulations also so that if, if the you know if the hazard field design district requires additional landscaping beyond what is normally required that it also be included in, in the, the design second second yeah, second, yeah. motions made and seconded now uh, you put in its trees right For yes number yeah. nine. okay any discussion on the motion? Yes, go ahead. I'm just glad to see um, somebody purchasing the building. To it's a beautiful building, and it's really neat. And I'm and I'm very excited. I, and I do understand the whole piece of, of it's going to take time um, to be able to renovate it. But it's nice to have somebody want to invest in our community, and that's a building that is just. I can't tell you how many people talk about that building. So, um, so I'm excited for that. And thanks. I believe if I have a postcard He's from way back that just shows the original eight, building eight, as it was before they put the one on front. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll see yeah. if I'll have to check. I do. Uh -huh. I too appreciate you doing it. I lived on that street for 40 years. <laughs> no longer do, but I'm always glad to see it getting upgraded, and especially that part of town. Yeah, uh, yeah really absolutely. Good. Appreciate okay, it. Okay, motion's made. Is all in favor? Uh, any opposed? It's unanimous. And good luck in your Thank project. You. And hopefully, we will see you again soon. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. All righty. 359. Site plan reviews. Other business? Uh, no any correspondence it was good to see we're getting the uh, magazine again or the newsletter uh, there's always a lot of good information in there uh, especially court cases there's a lot of them sometimes in fact we've ended up in a couple of them uh, and uh, that that's the one that we have not had for a while, so we must have paid our dues. Is that right? <laughs> She's over there nodding. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we get the quarterly newsletter now. Any uh, anything else, uh, Jen? I notice, and they aren't allowed. There's a clothing box down uh, from from the firehouse or Brainerd Road uh, down on the right hand side uh, I think it's at the store it's a little white one out there and you miss it if you're driving by so he the zoning enforcement officer should pay him a visit okay anything other uh, any yeah, other chairman generally about requiring us to provide what? There was an article in this Federation of Planning and Zoning Agencies about uh, state legislatures look to amend eight, Section 8.2. Oh, yeah. right. They want to change it from this housekeeping measure should be to require mu municipal zoning regulations to do more than encourage a variety of housing opportunities, including affordable housing and instead require that they amend their zoning reg regulations to provide for those or risk losing discretionary funding from the state. <laughs> well, we've, we, uh, we've always met the requirements well, so we've got a new mandate here. <laughs> <laughs> we we've always met it. Lose your money. And in fact, I think by some of the changes we've made recently, uh, whether knowingly or unknowingly, we've, uh, we've uh, done so. Yeah. Okay, uh, gentlemen. Uh, applications to uh, authorization. Uh, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. authorization for uh, anything. Well, Jen well, has a report. Do you have a report? I did have a few things that I wanted to bring up. Um, 
Just a couple of small things you, um, you should have received in your emails the from Raquel, um, anyone who needs to be reappointed, whose uh, seats are expired. I just want to make sure everyone did see that email um, and just be cognizant of that. Um, all of your reappointment applications have to go, I believe, to the town manager's office. So anyone who needs to do that, um, I would do that sooner rather than later. Um, we, you also received in your email an update on the Nutmeg Solar. Um, they, I believe they passed uh, through the um, siting council, so now they're moving on with their development plan, so yeah. that's moving forward. Um, and then the other th item, at the last, me or the meeting before, we discussed the um, amending the outdoor dining regulations um, to give you a little more um, leeway when approving audio systems along those same, when we sent that off to Krog, um, along those same lines, there's a portion of that same regulation that governs how big outdoor dining areas can be, um, and it says that uh, the outdoor dining area cannot exceed 50% of the floor area of the indoor dining area. Um, and I guess uh, there's a certain proposed restaurant in town that would like to have an outdoor dining area that is slightly bigger. Um, I don't know if that's something that you would be open to um, seeing a text amendment to as well. Uh, that uh, We don't have any proposed language at, uh, uh, at this time, but it was just sort of a request that came through the office. I think no, mostly. can't see somebody wanting to have I was going to say, if you're going to a restaurant, you're going to a restaurant to eat, or or you're going to a pub type thing to um, between your don't friends and their libations. Only. But patios are nice, but they're also seasonal. Yeah. And um, it, there was a lot of uh, thought that went into the present size of the patios that are mm. on the books. And I, for one, would not want to see it enlarged. I think that it's just again. Maybe some place it would work well, but for the most part, you're going, you're, most of our neighborhoods are kind of mixed, and um, you're going to have houses, and you're going to have um, businesses, and, and it's just, in my opinion, only my opinion, I'm happy with the way it's working now. I think they should be happy with what they got. Well, I think one of my concerns would be when you're going you're making your outside space bigger than your indoor. Yes. You're really limiting yourself because you only have a possible two seasons and you know time period to be able to utilize that unless it's like going to be somehow it's enclosed different. in a certain way or heated or whatever so i think yeah. to me that's just i'm not really well, sure it sounds well, like they want to use the stage more than they want to oh, use stage? well yeah that's what you allowed last time is uh, music they're not just going to put the band on the ground. Oh, okay. They're yeah. Gonna have, well, well, I believe so. The that's people... what they're, they're going to do is have more people so that they have more concerts. What? Let's say. Okay. Well, well, well that, uh, what? why else would they go there? Yeah. Other way? I don't. I guess I don't understand. I don't understand. So what you mean. I guess what this is coming from is that the potential user of this site is looking to put a patio, an outdoor dining patio that has. There's also a, um, a part of that section that says that the number of tables and seats within the um, outdoor dining patio can't exceed 50% of the number of seats indoor. They're not asking about that. So there's a commercial uh, recreation entertainment type um, component there that they would be looking to, um, to add to the outdoor. So they're not looking to necessarily have most of their seating outdoor, but they are looking for more space to do other things See, that's what I seasonally without outdoor. Without knowing what it is, and what it is it I can't where say. It, right. Where it is. Right. Yes. Without I mean, you're looking, that, we're going once blind. Once you open the door, right. oh, I'm sorry. Once you open the door, you can't close it. In no. other words, the people that we held to a specific standard are going to come back. And even if it's site specific, they're going to say, well, we've been doing this for years. We should get the consideration. Yeah, but residential neighborhood. Yeah. Not an industrial area. Yeah, There's exactly. There's differences between the areas that you're doing but it again, in and what you're proving. We're that being are site asked to, to, oh, yeah, add this 
blindly yeah. and, and I can't that's when that. we get into trouble yes and I can't yeah, do that that's right. why well, we they're just last time and the, and the we put conditions in there but apparently they didn't like the conditions because they want to have more room for more people naturally. well I, are we talking like a special permit I mean what do we well, that's well all outdoor dining patios require a special permit so right there that helps mm -hmm. with regards to whether it fits in with the neighborhood the health the self safety the welfare right. so I mean I think that's an important piece right there I just don't know if Personally, more than 50%, that's really pushing it that in my mind. In my mind. I don't there, there's nothing that pr uh, prohibits them from trying to expand it with a, with a, uh, a special use permit yes. to go before right. us, right. and then we just they can ask for it. Or they can ask for it. Event. Yeah. Uh, and, and, well, and, and don't forget, the, the, the reason why these outdoor patios really came about was because of the, uh, the smoking ban in restaurants and, and bars. So everybody started putting in small patios out there and it, and it just kind of grew and expanded to something different uh, where you know you got a big one out there at uh, say Stella's which has got a you know a nice one out front on uh, on Hazard Avenue but that's pretty elaborate uh, but it all started with the smoking ban you know customers wanted yeah. to you know a lot of them still smoke yeah. so mm -hmm. I think they got they actually got something that they requested anyhow, but now they want a little bigger bite. Mm -hmm. right. Jen, I guess you have the information. Anything else? Um, uh, not for me, unless you guys have anything, any of questions. Of course, they or... haven't come in at all, and they aren't willing yet to put their name out. So. <laughs> okay. About the authorization for administrative approvals anything uh, yep there's just that one um, item listed uh, the bagel shop located at 604 Enfield Street the same plaza where the tipsy paintbrush and the axe throwing are going what uh, well, Mary and I have to eat so are they only doing bagels I mean is it a bakery or what what exactly they, you, they used. That's where the Chinese restaurant used to be, right? I have no I idea. I don't know exactly. That's what I wanted to ask her. Or oh. is it going into the, where the pizza place used to be? Right. I don't think that's big enough. I don't know. I, yeah. Well, I don't know. That's why I asked. I What's just the assumed it was a, a the restaurant. Type of place, or is it just? Interesting. If it's a deli, that's sort of different. Yeah. I guess. <clears throat> So you want them to come in, or what do you think? Well, it's a minister of approval. I, well, you yeah, know, but you can in. tell them to come in instead. No. Yeah. They don't need to if it's just find out what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, they're she can let Charlie make, know what they're doing, and then and then if you have concerns, you can decide. We're just wondering what space that they're going into. There have been two restaurants already in that plaza, so. But, well, is it but, a but, restaurant? But normally and we don't know if it's a restaurant or just a bagel shop where you just go in and get yeah, a bagel. Bakery, and, you just pick yeah. up bagels. But does it really matter whether they're a restaurant or a bagel shop in terms of if, if it's no. if it's a retail area and they're just providing just a service as either a retail or a business, it, it really shouldn't matter. So oh, but they'll need the, the after the axe throwing. Oh. You know, <laughs> we need to know. All right. So they said and a snake house. <laughs> it's a bagel restaurant serving coffee, breakfast, and lunch from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. So, so I would imagine really there's a the kitchen. All right. Fine. That's different, yeah. yeah. And, okay. and where are they going? In the <laughs> old friendlies? Because that's all set up, I would guess, unless they tore everything out. I know. I, I'm not sure where that one is, but um, I'm looking in here. They didn't demark out which... Um, which exact unit it's in. Um, I'm pretty sure from discussions with um, our staff that I thought it was the Chinese place before. It was a what? Oh, Chinese place. That'll before. be a good use. That's the one closest to Enfield Street. Yeah. And it used to yeah, be a Chinese. I thought, I thought that was one. Yeah. 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 
Well, then, oh, friendly. See, okay, it was a Chinese in between. I forget that one. Okay. Mr. Chair, I'll just make a motion that we approve authorization for administrative approval of Site Plan Review 1779-604 in Field Street uh, for a, a Benson's Bagels. Second. Okay, all in favor? Great. Okay. Do it. And that, any applications to be received? Uh, we did receive an application um, for the shops at Elm Street Square across from Palumba Drive, so that'll be coming to you. Um, <coughs> we've received a lot of applications in the office, and staff obviously was um, out last week. We were at uh, the second portion of our Casio training, so uh, we're playing catch up this week, and it's turning into busy season in our office, so we'll be seeing more applications. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Uh, can I just mention one thing before we adjourn? I was in Bob's uh, yesterday, and I happened to be talking to one of the managers, and um, she said that they can't find a place. Um, they want us, because I said, I hope you're staying in Enfield, and they said, she said uh, they'd like to, but they can't find a place. And I was thinking the perfect opportunity for somebody in economic development to scoot over there and see what they need and see if there's anything that Enfield can offer them, because otherwise we're going to lose them to another town. And I think that's what the economic development people should be doing. So that was just my one thought. Bob's. No, I don't know. Why, I, they lose their, I didn't. No, that's where um, the uh, ho no. home goods and the uh, ultra they're, they're are They're splitting it, right. right. It's the same but owner. the Bob's is not going out of business. They're just looking for a new site. Right. They want to stay in, in Enfield. The Enfield Square is 50% empty. That's what I said Sears, for them. That's yeah. what I, oh, yeah. JC well, what I said. Like a, There's plenty it, of spaces for them. Yeah, That's but right. wouldn't it be nice if somebody kind of held their hand through the process a little bit? Just give them some suggestions. Otherwise, they're going to another yeah. town. That's what economic development does. Well, yes. I thought they were going out of business because no. I didn't figure no. they would just leave the place where everybody knows where it is. No. They had no choice. No. They didn't get their rent renewal. Oh. Oh, all right. What happened? Oh, right. Motion to adjourn? Second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.